The Hoosiers played down to the wire against both Northwestern and Ohio State this week. Could Hoosier Nation finally rejoice and end the Big Ten winless drought? After a tough loss to Illinois, the Hoosier women's basketball team was back in action as they took on the Nittany Lions of Penn State Thursday night. Coming up, we'll tell you if they were able to redeem themselves. And when people sit in a semicircle and talk sports, interesting and controversial statements are bound to be made. Who's your sports night bringing scintillating conversation and sweltering IU sports action? I definitely didn't write this. It's all good stuff tonight on Who's Your Sports Night. Welcome into Hoosier Sports Night with Alexis Hosier. I'm Ronan O'Shea. Alexis, Indiana just cannot find a win. That's right, Ronan. Hopefully they can get a Big Ten win this week. Let's get into it. Last year, Evanston, Illinois marked the beginning of what would become a tremendous downfall in the Hoosier men's basketball program. IU squeaked out a victory 85-82 against the lowly Northwestern Wildcats. But it was the first game that followed the resignation of former head coach Kelvin Sampson. Now, roughly 11 months later, the Hoosiers returned to Evanston with a brand new head coach, a fresh set of players, and a new goal of never giving up. IU at Northwestern looking for their first conference win. Devin Dumas early in the game with the three ball. Hoosiers with a good lead early, up 12-3. IU with the ball again, and it's all about Devin Dumas in this one with the quick jumper. He had 26 points on the night for the Hoosiers. But the game's tied up, and Daniel Moore trying to get to Dumas, but Craig Moore, no relation to Daniel, gets the ball to Jerry Nash. He slams it home for the Wildcats, and they head into the half, tied up, 39 all. How would the second half go? Northwestern takes control. Craig Moore drains the three with a hand in the face. Northwestern continues to lead. Wildcats with a ball pass to Kevin Coble with the shot. He goes down. Tabor with the foul. Apparently the purple people eaters love this guy. Hoosier's looking to catch up for Dell Jones with the jumper. Hoosiers now trailing by three. Less than a minute to go. Less than a minute to go, a one possession game. Get the ball in Matt Roth's hands. And he drains the three to tie up the game with the clock ticking away. Hoosier bench excited about this close game. With five seconds on the clock, the inbounds played result in a turnover for the Hoosiers. They lose in the final seconds, 77-75. Craig Moore did everything for Northwestern except announce the starting lineups. He had 21 points, 4 assists, 3 steals, and 3 rebounds, all of which were team highs. Kevin Koble chipped in a generous 19 points as well. Indiana got great play out of Devin Dumas, whose 26 points were a career high, while Tom Pritchard was relatively quiet with 7 points, although he did grab 10 rebounds. Indiana also made a season-high 12 three-pointers. After losing in the final seconds to Northwestern, Hoosier fans were hoping the team could break into the win column against Ohio State. But unlike the low-scoring affair between the Wildcats and the Hoosiers, IU and the Buckeyes was full of big shots. All right, out to Assembly Hall we go. Indiana looking at their biggest crowd of the year, more than 17,000. And they see the Big Ten's top freshman, Tom Pritchard, there putting in two of his nine but the story of the game for the Hoosiers, Matt Roth from downtown here, he puts the Hoosiers up six, and just minutes later, the other wing, Roth hit four threes in the first half and nine in the game. Much more to come from the freshman from Illinois. Other side of the court, though, it's Evan Turner going up and drawing the foul. He basically kept Ohio State in the game in the first half. He hits the long two here. Evan Turner, 17 points in the first half for Ohio State. Closing minute now, who else but Matt Roth. The NBA three goes in, Indiana up 39-37 at the half. Could they break the losing streak? Second half now we pick things up and John Diebler puts up the three and draws the foul. Diebler would finish with 21 points three times in the game. Ohio State fouled on the long three. Other end of the court, Story puts one in for the Hoosiers. A seesaw battle at this point, Indiana up two, but Ohio State, other end of the court, again, Diebler hits the three. Eight minutes to go, Indiana down four. A long three from the corner there puts Ohio State up seven. That one from William Buford. And in the closing minutes of the game, again, they go to Buford with the foul. He hits it, 24 points on the night for Buford. One of four Buckeyes in double digits. 
time running out. Who else but Matt Roth chucks up the three and hits it. Roth, a career-high 29 points, but the Hoosiers lose 93-81. The IU men's basketball team went into the half leading Ohio State by two, but a struggling second half team fell to the Buckeyes, 93-81. to It's going to take defense. We let them shoot 76% in the second half, and we can really step up our defense, and we'll be able to get over the hump. Better communication, better, um, better individual um, a mindset of just standing in front of your guy and playing better defense. We did some good things defensively, but we didn't do enough, obviously, in the second half. And as I said to them, you're not going to win games when a team is shooting like that. Matt Roth led the Hoosiers with 29 points the first time a freshman has scored nine three-pointers in a Big Ten game. I think your confidence grows and the confidence in your team grows. We know how, how well he can shoot the ball, and um, he hit his first couple of threes, and we knew it was hot. So we just kept feeding him and feeding him, and he was just knocking down shot to shot. From Assembly Hall, Alexis Hozier, Hoosier Sports Night. No head coach will admit that officials cost their team the win. And when the Hoosiers look back on Saturday's loss at Ohio State, the Buckeyes' 76% field goal percentage in the second half eventually did the Hoosiers in. But when the Buckeyes got to the free throw line 21 times compared to Indiana's nine in the second half, Indiana head coach Tom Crean chose his words very carefully when talking about the officials. You know, I would, it's, it's not my first time. You know, as all of you know, I had a referee tell me tonight this isn't my first rodeo. Well, it's not mine either. Okay, I get that. But um, I really don't have an answer. I, I don't. I, and I'm not trying to be evasive. It's, I don't have an answer. I'll, I'll, I'll never miss a game. I'll never have money taken from me, and I'll never have money taken from Indiana on any comments I would ever make. So please understand that. That doesn't mean that they're not being made privately, but I would never do that in here. Uh, I love coaching too much. So it's not my first time either. You know, and I think that's, uh, there's times out there it feels like it, but I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. I, I'm, I'm used to a certain way of business and uh, I'm going to try to keep myself in, in that realm and just kind of go from there. I really, don't, I really don't want to say much more than that. Inside Assembly Hall, I'm Ronan O'Shea, Hoosier Sports Night. Ohio State seemed to score at will on the Hoosiers. Four of their five starters scored double digits and three of those went over 20 points with Evan Turner's 29 being the game high. Turner also picked up a double-double, having 10 rebounds to go with his scoring performance. Indiana got its most production out of freshman Matt Roth, who came off the bench carrying a hot hand. He apparently forgot that he could shoot inside the three-point line as he hit nine of his 11 shots, all from beyond the arc. Overall, both teams combined for 25 of 45 on three-point baskets. When you're really good at something, you can take it for granted once in a while. He hasn't done that since the Lipscomb game. He is really been one of our bigger gym rats in the sense of doing more things after practice or coming back at night and, and he needs to continue to do that. I mean it's just a matter of getting a lot of reps and practice sometimes you don't always get enough reps and it's something that he's had some great shooters in the past that come in and they get extra shots up and it's something that I've been doing. We know how, how well he can shoot the ball and um, he hit his first couple of threes and we knew it was hot so we just kept feeding him and feeding him and he was just knocking down shot after shot. It's an incredible shooting performance we knew he could do it we've seen it all summer and we just I mean, it was bound to happen sooner or later. Breaking news in Bloomington, this year's men's basketball team isn't any good. But how are their chances going to be next year? The Indiana women's basketball team was in action Thursday night against Penn State. We'll see if the ladies could stay towards the top of the Big Ten Conference. All this coming up next on Hoosier Sports Night.